Off the juice, coding got me tripping. Hey, brand new coop. Woke up top is missing. Hey. <clears throat> yeah, there's no need to tell me in the comment section. I know I've got a hell of a set of pipes on me. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Music on the Channel. I hope you all are having a wonderful day so far. And today, we're going to be talking about the latest album from Internet Money called Before the Storm. And yes, that is the letter B and the number four because, you know, that detail is just so important. Now, Internet Money isn't just comprised of one or two artists. No, no, no. Actually, far from it. It was founded by Taz Taylor in LA and comprised of a bunch of producers that all band together under one label. And when I say a bunch of producers, I mean it. Look, look at this list. That's insane. That is a lot of producers. And that roster list gets even longer when you look at the musicians that are signed to the label as well, like Ty Fontaine and Little Spirit that make appearances on this album. Most people will be lying if they said they've heard of Internet Money prior to this album due to the fact that a lot of their production work was very local, remote artists that you wouldn't be aware of unless you were in that city or that area. Their first official single under the Internet Money name came out last year in October of 2019 as a result of a joint deal with the label, that being somebody featuring Lil Tecca in a boogie. My first introduction to their music came from the single Lemonade in promotion for this upcoming project. And on paper, Nav, Gunna, Don Tolliver, eh, it doesn't sound like the best of times to me. But I gave it a listen out of curiosity, and lo and behold, as you can tell from the intro of this video, I, I, I do, I, I very much enjoy that song. So, with thoroughly enjoying that song, and liking somebody for the most part, I think Lil Tecca actually performed better than I thought he would, and A Boogie did a decent job too. I went into this project not expecting the greatest thing on earth, but knowing that I might be in for just a good, enjoyable, fun time, you know, some entertaining beats, entertaining collaborations, and, um, is that what we got with this project? <laughs> Fuck you, Donna. Yeah, I was not a fan of this project, really, in the slightest. There are some highlights I'll get into later, but they're kind of far and in between. I know better than to go into a compilation album expecting the greatest material ever, because it's always a collaboration amongst producers, amongst artists, it's a bunch of minds and people in the same room trying to see what they can come up with. But that was the same exact scenario for Revenge of the Dreamers 3, and look how good that project turned out. And yes, you can make that comparison, because just because that project had Jake Cole on it doesn't mean it was automatically going to be good. Where this project really falters is with its artistic performances, because the lesser known artists are basically trying to emulate other artists, and the more well known artists are basically on autopilot. I mean, we know Lil' Keed for notoriously ripping off Young Thug, but then you have Ty Fontaine who's doing his best Playboy Cardi impression, you have The Holiday and Lil' Spirit that are both ripping off Sway Lee, and for some reason the Kid Leroy, god I don't understand why anybody likes this artist, but he sounds exactly like Trippy Red but a way worse version, like Trippy Red's worst tapes as B-sides. It was honestly painful trying to listen to the song speak with the Kid Leroy, like more than once, it was very difficult. I- the voice is just so grating, I don't- somebody please explain that to me, I don't- I don't get his appeal. You have the track Thrusting with Sway Lee and Future, and they both sound like they're bored out of their minds. I mean, this song sounds like it should be straight off of an ASMR sleep playlist. And my god, <laughs> my god, somebody please tell me what the hell Wiz Khalifa was doing on Giddy Up. What, what even is that song? What is his part in the song? Oh my god, it is terrible. Like, I've heard some verses by Wiz Khalifa that people are like, oh, he's stoned out of his mind, doesn't know what he's saying, and I'm like, yeah, okay, but it was still a decent verse. This one actually sounds like he's stoned out of his mind, I had no idea what the hell he was doing in the booth. There are songs in here that I don't mind, like Lost to Me and J-Lo, but they just become so muddied by the rest of this album and other parts of it that are so bad that it makes them kind of, it drag, those bad songs drag those decent songs down with them. But that's not to say all the performances on this album are bad. I mean, Trippy Red comes through more than once to save this project with some decent vocals, and I'm pretty sure they knew Trippy Red was pretty fitting for their beats, that's why they used up like three or four times on this project. Him and Juice World actually come out on top with one of the better cuts off this project, Blast Off. Juice World, of course, giving those very emotional and vivid pictures with his lyrics. As I mentioned, Lil Tecca comes through with some alright performances, and also Gunna, Don Tolliver, and Nav all kill the one song they're on at the tail end. But the one feature who surprised the hell out of me on this project was, indeed, Kevin Gates with the song No Option. This dude 100% should have kept this song for his own project, but I'm glad he put it on here just to help me get through this project. It's just so detailed talking about him going to prison and how that affected his family. That one line where he talks about him lying to his daughter about not going to prison again, just that really stuck out and was just a real heartbreaker. If you're going to take anything away from this project, let it be this song for sure. So for an album made by a collective of producers on one label, you'd think I would have talked about the production by now. And... The reason for that is there's just nothing to write home about. I hear influences from the likes of Pierre Bourne, from Take a Day Trip, but there's nothing on this project that signals to me, oh, this is an internet money beat. 
And I think part of the reason for that is there's just a bunch of different producers. So each producer or a collective of producers, like a few of them at a time, made one of the songs and then just kind of shoved it all together on one project. Which I guess is fine if you're trying to showcase everybody's talent on that label, but it doesn't make for a cohesive and necessarily good sounding project. Let alone some of these songs I wouldn't even play individually, like the beats on them just sound very average, like I could find way better production somewhere else. Again, I'll make the comparison to Revenge of the Dreamers 3. Different producers on every song, but it sounded interesting because each beat was interesting. Each song had its own thing going on, so it was very interesting to listen to all the way through. And uh, here, not, not so much. Internet money really is just the equivalent of songs you put on a party playlist, just to make the playlist longer in between the better bangers. And it's really just kind of a shame, there's not much else to say, but I wish they released more dynamic material that would actually make them stand out. I, I know Lemonade is popping as a single right now, but once that has its expiration date, I don't know what else they got because the rest of these songs are just like one listen forgettable. I hope they utilize the exposure and profit they get from this project in the future because I did hear some good ideas here and there. And who knows really, maybe some of these producers could have been saving their better beats and better ideas for their own project or some other artist they wanted to save it for. So the whole point of this could very much be for the mentioned profit and exposure. But judging the album independently as its own piece, it just doesn't work that well. It's very clunky, very boring, very average, a few standout moments, but overall just not that very good. Like I mentioned in my last video, I usually end these videos by ranking this album out of that artist's discography, but considering this is their first album by default, I guess this is their best album, but I, uh, I sure as shit hope they can do better than this. As for top five songs in the album, I will go with Really Red, uh, and then we'll go... Oh, this is kind of tough. Uh, No Option, Lemonade, Blast Off, and somebody. Man, what does that tell you of two of my favorite songs or promotional singles? And yeah, I think that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching all the way to the end. I really appreciate it. Uh, of course, this is just my opinion. So if you wanna talk about these albums with me and discuss it, if you liked it better, like it worse, I'll put my links to my Twitter and Instagram in the description. And that is all I got for you guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. I make a rain on Harriet. Something in.